We're going one page back, page three of the handout, and have a closer look. The last part of the page. How do we feel the demographic transition right now in this country? You know, we had two peculiar years. We had a corona pandemic. And during that pandemic, we didn't notice what was going on. We were sitting at home. There were lockdowns. But already right now, hundreds of thousands of people are getting a retirement age and leave the labor market. And in those two years, when we were all sitting at home and doing nothing, working from our screens, uh, hundreds of thousands of people left the labor market. And then suddenly, last spring, we could all go outside again. Uh, and the hundreds of thousands of people who retired in 19, or 2020, 2021 said, now, now it's our turn to sit outside in a cafe. But where were the young people to bring them coffee? <laughs> so we lose hundreds of thousands of people on our labor market every year, and we have only tiny numbers of people who join the labor market. And that's one problem. But the second problem is that the people we lose on the labor market are healthy. And they are wealthy. They're spending. They want to sit in a cafe. They want to go traveling. They have good retirement income. Uh, so they have uh, quite a demand on the market. But where are the people to ful fulfill that demand? I have a small prediction. This problem will be with us for the next 20 years. <laughs> so we don't have any solutions anymore. So... We don't have enough doctors, we don't have enough um, engineers, we don't have enough uh, railway employees. Uh, you can read the newspapers. And that's the situation we have to cope. There are no solutions. Yeah, we can import even more and more migrants. But mind you, the problem of aging is everywhere in Europe. And until shortly, we got a lot of people from Romania and Bulgaria and Estonia, also very fast aging countries. But those countries are economically doing quite well, so people decide to stay at home. So we cannot import their labor anymore. So we have to think about our labor market. Um, what is happening geographically with the population decline? We always think of the Netherlands as a country which is, has already some decline on the, in the border regions. I spent some years in Delsel. We have a map, by the way. We have a map. And for the people who are not familiar with the map, here's Delsel. We have some guests from Venlo. Where are you? We have some guests from Venlo. You're most welcome. And you are working here. So on the borders of our country, we have already uh, declining populations. Uh, I was raised in a neighborhood which was built in the 1970s in this small city of Del Sal. That neighborhood is demolished again. It was built in the 1970s and after 30 years it was demolished again. It, there, it's a park, it's water. It, it, there's nothing uh, uh, left there. And we always think that um, population decline is something for the province of Limburg, where our friends are from, for Groningen, for uh, the southern part of Zeeland but also our neighboring city of Alphen, our neighboring city of Soetermeer, will start having a declining population. And people don't, are always aware of that. So decline is quite near. Will decline also come to Leiden? Well, sometime, sometime, but not in our lifetime. Why? Because we are um, seeing a very... Um, important demographic pattern, young people, young people who want to study, who want to start a business, who want to enjoy life, are leaving the countryside, are leaving the new towns, are leaving Zoetermeer, are leaving Alphen der Rijn, are leaving Apeldoorn, are leaving Houten, and they go to a select group of cities which we now know as the knowledge hubs, the knowledge hubs. That's where everything, everything is, is happening. And we know the largest knowledge hub of our country, that is, of course, Amsterdam. Amsterdam will continue growing for a long time. 
Leiden is another knowledge hub. The Hague is becoming a knowledge hub. And we have Nijmegen, we have Eindhoven, and we have Groningen. So uh, two hands full of knowledge hubs where young people go and where uh, young people start their career, um, decide about their identity. Am I a civil servant? Am I a, a businessman? Uh, am I an engineer? What, what, what kind of identity do I have? What is my preference for living, for working? All those decisions are made in a group when you are 20, 25, 30 years. And that, that group is absent in a large part of the country. And they all come to our kind of cities. So we have a select group of knowledge hubs, which are harvesting the hinterland, brain drain from the hinterland, and which are um, trading a lot of people and ideas with each other. We have, in this small city, we have some neighbors, geographic neighbors. We have the Bollestreek, we have Soeterwoude, we have Leidenwerp. But our main partner in exchanging people is Amsterdam. And second main partner in exchanging people is The Hague. And we exchange more people with Groningen as with nearby Lisse. And so people tend to move around, to travel around the knowledge hubs, because they know what's going on there and they find the same uh, lifestyle. And there's a division um, rising between the, the knowledge hubs on the one hand and the internet on the, other, on the other hand. So we will see that later in this afternoon back. Um, so is it nice to be on the receiving end of a brain drain? Yes, of course. It's nice to be on the receiving end of a brain drain. Look at all those young people in our, in our streets. But it's a responsibility. 